Hi. <laughs> oh yeah, so welcome to another yoga video by uh, me. I am going to be blending together, as I always do, some different styles of yoga. Um, it's going to be pretty chill today. This particular video, my aim is to help you relax. It's to help you to ease anxiety and stress, because I know a lot of us are suffering with that at the moment. And it's also to get your body moving. So I understand there's a lot of us that are trapped inside at the moment. And this is, you know, it's okay to a point, isn't it? But then you start feeling a little bit like your body is kind of not your own anymore. Um, I know I've even I've been really worried about turning into an amorphous blob while I'm stuck inside. <laughs> uh, it can happen. So yeah, it, I think this is really for people who either just want a nice relaxed and anti-stress practice, which blends Qigong, uh, Pilates, maybe a little bit of Pilates and yoga. Um, or if you're stuck at home and you're less, um, you're less practiced in yoga, you don't do as much yoga, or if any, to be honest, you've, this is your first yoga class possibly. This is, I'm hoping, going to be okay for most of us to do. So if you are in that age bracket where you have to stay in at the moment, this hopefully will be okay if, you, if you're a beginner. So this is my aim is to put out this free one, but it's also a bit of an add-on to, if you're already subscribed to my website and you're getting the weekly Yoga Monday videos, this can be something, little extras that you want uh, that are free. So anyway, I'll try not to talk too much. Um, yeah, this, with this, for this particular practice, I'm gonna say, so try having your mat against the wall if you've got space. As you can see, you don't really need a huge amount of space. Um, only the, the narrow width of the mat. Also having a block would be good and you can also use a large book if you've got Stephen King. Um, a pillow which can double up as a bolster and also uh, maybe a strap but also if you don't have a yoga strap doesn't matter you can use a belt or even even a towel or something's fine. So this is the equipment that we need today. Also want maybe to have um, some relaxing ambiance, maybe some cats. One of my cats is actually just dozing on the sofa at the moment. They're pretty good at self-isolation, aren't they, cats? <laughs> and learn a thing or two from my cats, um, as always, on, on how to relax. So yeah, animals always good. Mm. Make sure it's warm enough in the house as well, because it's not going to be super feisty, this one. So maybe put the heating up by a notch if it's a bit chilly. We're going to start off with a bit of standing up. So if you if you're already on the floor, just take your time getting up. Oh, or if you're sitting on a chair, take your time. And we're gonna take our feet to start with nice and wide, so kind of a little squat position. So it's gonna start with some Qigong. Now Qigong is energy work. Tai Chi is a form of Qigong. Um, like there's martial arts that come from Qigong. Um, it's all to do with energy movement in the body and it kind of works on the principles of the meridian lines a little bit like acupuncture, Chinese medicine. And the aim is to open up these energy channels and get energy moving around the body, channel energy through the central nervous system of the spine and also to kind of invigorate, wake up, but also relax and let go. So if you have a lot of anxiety energy at the moment or you're a bit stressed out as a lot of us are, I want you to use this to let go of that kind of negative energy. So we'll start with the feet quite wide and I want you to go as wide as feels comfortable so you don't feel um, wobbly. Lift and spread the toes out, take them into the floor and then just rock the weight around a little bit in different areas of your feet. So you might feel that you can uh, press the weight to the balls of the big toes, the little toes, the blades of the feet, heels and then just start to move the weight from right to left leg. So in Qigong, we want to keep a little bit of a bend in the knee most of the time. And so I just want you to experiment with how this feels in your knees, bearing in mind that you can bring weight into different areas of the foot to impact different areas of the knee. What you're not looking to do is get your knee to go too far forward over the ankle, if you can see. So if you can bring the weight a little bit more in your heels, and this is going to be a great way to strengthen your legs, wake up your thigh muscles. And don't forget, these are pretty important, these muscles, because they need to carry around all day long. As soon as you atrophy, you lose muscle mass in your legs and you're not supporting your body as well. So bear in mind, a little bit of burning is gonna be a good thing, but as a true martial arts expert needs to be, you wanna be nice and relaxed. So as you kind of bend 
the knees a little bit, explore the weight in the feet, just start to roll the shoulders as you breathe in, lift them up, exhale, roll them down, breathing in, and then breathing out, letting them relax. And just feel that the shoulders maybe are a little bit stiff, that you want to kind of massage them with these little circles. And then just bending the knees just a little bit more, just start to sit down into the legs. Think of the tailbone drawing down a little bit towards the floor, so it feels like you're rooted through your pelvis. As you press down through the inner feet, imagine the energy goes up through the inside of the leg. So when you start to feel um, like this is difficult to bend your knees, focus on your feet and think about where the weight is. And don't forget, you can, of course, straighten your legs a little bit whenever you need to. So we'll start with just some arm swings. Really simple, really easy. And you're just moving your rib cage side to side and you can start to bend and straighten the legs going one way and then the other way and just letting your arms go loose and soft. And I want you to feel in these next couple of little sequences that you're able to let go of tension in your arms. So maybe now you could even lift a heel. If your feet are too wide and you're struggling with that, you can take them a bit closer together. Just adjust your feet as you need to. Now let the arms go super dangly, which is a technical term, of course, anatomical term. <laughs> you want them to be, I'm gonna use another favorite word here, pendulous. You want them to be a little bit pendulous. Uh, I'm just let them wrap around your waist. Lengthen the back of your neck, lift up through the back of your neck. And imagine that all the tension from the day or that you're holding onto in your body is starting to melt off. And you can, if you've got space around, you can let the arms just go even more relax, let the heel lift a bit more, get a bit more of a, a twist going. Um, just be careful you don't fall over like I almost did then. Got a bit excited there and closed my eyes. Fix the gaze to a spot and then slowing down. Come back to your squat, little knee bend, just bring your hands to your lower belly. Take a breath into the lower belly and as you exhale, breathe out from the lower belly. So breathing into the lower belly. Breathing out from the lower belly. Bring all your attention into the lower belly as you breathe in. And then try to relax and let go as you breathe out. Maybe ground a little bit more by bending the knees. One more really long breath into the lower belly. Exhaling, bending the knees just a little more and relaxing the shoulders. Now, this really easy Qigong exercise here, as you breathe in, Rub your belly with your hands. As you breathe out, push the hands down, interlace the fingers, and then press the palms up to the sky. Really deep inhales at the side ribs to the belly. And then exhale, just let your arms relax. Interlace the fingers again now. So we're gonna rub the belly. Imagine you've got like a little pot, a little Buddha pot as you breathe in. Palms come up to the chest as you exhale, you push down, bend your knees a little bit more. Inhale, stretch up. Really work on opening out the shoulders and then exhale, oh, relaxing the arms down. So simple, but so effective at stretching your upper body. So as you breathe in, think of taking in as much breath as you can. And then as you breathe out, think about really relaxing, letting go of excess tension. Inhale, free up the side body, free up the shoulders, wake up the energy in the arm, and then exhale, relaxing. Let your shoulders melt down. Let your elbows and your wrists and your fingers be really soft. Let's try a couple more of these, inhaling. Little balloon belly up to the chest, rub it with your palms. Exhale, push down with the palms, stretch the knuckles. Inhale, wake up, shoulders, ribs, chest. Exhale, relax. Try three more, a little slower this time, inhaling. If you find you're going a bit fast, just come with me, slow down. Inhaling. Try and keep a little bend in the knee, and then exhaling. Find fluidity with your movement now and match it with the breath. Take a really refreshing inhale. A nice relaxing exhale. 
stretch and open and breathe into the base of your lung. And then let go of what you don't need. Let go of excess thinking now as well. Try to let, let your mind have a little break. Whatever worries you've got, whatever worries we've all got, will still be there in an hour. Just give yourself this little bit of time to not be thinking about anything else but your body. To lace the fingers behind the back now, take a little chest stretch, straighten the legs, and just pull the arms down towards the floor. Push into the feet, find support through your feet, and really create some space in your heart. Allow the stomach to open, squeeze the glutes a little bit, the butt muscles, so you can open up a little bit through the front. Squeeze your thighs, press down through your feet, and then come back up so that your chin drops to your chest. Keep, I'll show you from the back here, keep your arms really active. And if you've got very tight shoulders, you can now grab your strap and use the strap to, as an interlace of the fingers. So if you've got very tight shoulders, this feels a bit more comfortable. So get a good grip on the strap, pull the arms back and down. Try squeezing the shoulder blades together until you feel a stretch in your neck. As you breathe in, open up a little bit through the heart, but keep the chin pressing down towards it. And then as you breathe out, roll your right ear to your right shoulder just until you feel the stretch in the left side of the neck. Drop the chin, left ear to left shoulder. Drop the chin, right ear to right shoulder. So just a couple of these little semicircles, and you can lift your chin a little bit as you roll now. Left ear to left shoulder. And then dropping to center, release your interlaced fingers. You can just drop the strap down and take now interlaced fingers at the back of the head and let your neck relax. So keeping firm in the front of the thighs, remember that you're supporting yourself with your legs here. Take a deep breath in and as you breathe out, stretch the neck a little bit more. The opposite direction now, keep a hold of the head, squeeze the shoulder blades together and take a really big breath into your heart. See if you can stretch your heart out a little bit. Oh, imagine you're waking up. It's one of those kind of stretches. Nice and natural. Bring the head back to center. Try moving the arms, and you can again use a strap if you're struggling to interlace your fingers. Over to the left. It doesn't matter how far they go. And then just press the head back into the elbow or the upper arm. And see if you can feel it all the way down your rib cage. And changing sides and then again press the head back so you might find that you're kind of here and that you feel a bit closed up in your front body don't worry about it just take your time be patient with your body if you don't do a lot of yoga and you know this is kind of a bit of a beginner's one or you've been recovering from an injury take it easy on your body and be patient now releasing back to center Try pulling the arms physically away from the head or open the chest, really broaden the chest. And then releasing the arms back down. We'll take the hands on the hips. And again, you've got wide uh, stance here, or horse stance as it's called. And so you wanna maybe go from side to side just to stretch a little bit through the hips. So you can start to press the hips back. Lift your chest, look down towards the floor. Try pressing into one side so you feel the inner thigh stretching out and then press into the other side, same again. So you're getting a little bit of a stretch for your inside hip. Press the hips back, breathing into the lower back space. But don't forget to support your body with your muscles. So this is the thing to remember with muscles, yeah? They're there to support your body. So sometimes when you're doing exercises like this, you need to focus on which muscles you're engaging um, so you can support your bone. But which muscles also you can relax a little bit, so you don't want to be overly tensing. Come back up to center, bending the knees, roll the spine back up to standing. And then let's take the feet a little closer together now. So you've got the feet just a little bit wider than the hips now, maybe shoulder width distance. So nice, easy going flow. And so you're going to take a breath in, let the arms rise up. As you breathe out, you're going to push the hands outwards. So the hands fall behind the back of the head, bend your knees. 
Inhale, palms up. Imagine scooping energy in towards your head and shoulders. And then exhale, suck in the belly and push forward, rounding the shoulder blades, dropping the chin. Then inhaling, open the front body, stretching out. Exhale, folding forwards nice and slowly, bending the knees on the way. Just see how this feels in your back. As you breathe in, I want you to sit into a deeper squat, letting the arms rise up. Remember the weight in the different areas of the feet. Exhale, folding again. And inhale, rising. Front stretch at the top, and then exhale, let your arms release down by your sides, nice and soft. I love this. Thank Bernie Clark for this. Inhale, let the arms rise up. I'll show you from the back here, just let your elbows bend, your hands fall behind your neck, and then push out and bend your knees. Think about physically pushing away stress and tension. Inhale, touch the shoulders, drink the breath to the side body. Exhale, push forward and stretch the back body. Inhale, engage a little bit through the back of your legs and your glutes, and then exhale, fold. One of the main aims of this is to move nice and slowly, so don't rush. Inhale, sit into a squat. Embrace leg strength, building leg strength. Exhale, fold. Stretch the back of the body, but really gentle. And then inhale, rising up. Exhale, the arms trickle down like water. Let's try one more. Inhale, let the arms rise up. Scoop the energy into the head, bend the elbows, exhale. Get rid of the stuff you don't need from your shoulders, from your hips, from your back. Take in some fresh, clean, positive energy. And then exhale, get rid of the stuff you don't want. Inhale, opening the arms to the sky. Exhale, bending the knees, folding. Inhale. Sit into chair, feel strong in your legs. Feel the thigh muscles working, the hips working. Exhale, let the body fall effortlessly over the legs. And then inhale all the way up to standing. And then exhale, just let your arms relax down. So hopefully the legs feel a little bit warmer now. Um, let's try a standing lunge. So I think sometimes lunges can be really brilliant for just making you, I, at the same time as working the muscles, you're also stretching things out, relaxing things a little bit. So we'll just do one lunge on each side. So come a little bit away from the wall, have your feet about hip width, and then try stepping your left foot back until it's against the wall, and you can just scooch it back a little bit. Make sure your heel at least is on the wall, if not your whole foot. And then just start to bend into the right knee. Now you'll feel, if you press the heel into the wall, a little bit more supported in the lunge. I want you to try stretching out this left side of the hip here. So you bend your right knee, so it's over the ankle. So look, this, I, I cannot stress enough how important the alignment is. So knee over the second toe, and then focus the heel and the ball of the foot to the floor. Feel like you're pushing the floor forward with the right foot. And then take a hold of the right hip with the right hand, Stretch the left arm over to the right. You can even keep the knee, the elbow bent if that's more comfortable to hold the head. And then just bend the right knee a little bit more until you feel a little bit of a stretch here. So you're probably feeling that thigh muscles working too. That's a good thing. One more breath, try to stretch. Stretch the left side all the way up into the ribs. Oh. And then let's switch sides. So let's hit the left foot roughly the same. Uh, distance forward. Remember, if you're feeling wobbly, just take your feet a bit further apart width-wise. See if you can get your heel or even the whole foot on the wall. There's no rush. I've got plenty of time at the moment, so no rush. Bend into the left knee. Bend until you feel the muscles are working. Don't forget, every time you feel like something's challenging for your legs, think about your foot. I promise it makes all the difference. Push the floor forward with the left foot and then start to straighten and stretch out the right hip. So just focus on stretching the hip flexors, such a good stretch. Breathe to open, to relax as much as you can, relax. While we're quarantined, we should at least try and train to be ninjas. This is a good time to train to be a ninja. Right arm comes up and over, sink a little deeper. Stretch the right side now. So notice how you can feel strong, engaged, muscles are working, 
but also relaxed, flexible, stretch, opening. So there's space, so there's both going on here, you know, it's not just turn, turn, everything can relax. So one more breath, and you can hold the head if you want, really open out the right side body, compromises your balance a bit too, which is a good thing, remember. And then release back to center. Oh, and then shake out your legs a little bit. So while we're here, let's just do a little balance sequence. Now you can use the wall here if you like. So this is totally up to you. If you want to use the wall, you're very welcome. Now, very, very simple uh, posture. Um, in fact, I always, I always end up doing figure four. I'm going to do tree, but let's start with tree and then we'll work towards figure four because this can help stretch the hips out as well, which should feel really good. So remember, you can use the wall. You can either just put your hand on the wall like so, or you can even lean against the wall if you want to. Balancing is something that takes time, like anything, to build. So if you don't do a lot of yoga, you don't do a lot of balancing, just be gentle with yourself. Start off by bringing the weight into the left foot and the different areas of the left foot. Roll the weight around a little bit. Now imagine you're going to use your toes here. First thing is to lift the heel of the left foot, the right foot, sorry, onto the left ankle or calf. And you can stay here. This might be where you stay today. That's okay. Or calf. Or practiced yogis, you can put the foot up high, bearing in mind it's harder on carpet. Draw energy in and up. All you need to think about, I think, is the foot, planting the foot, rooting through the foot as if it was literally rooting into the ground underneath you. Energy goes in and energy lifts up. Fix the gaze, use the wall if you need to, or touch the toes down on the floor. Take your option, probably doing this on your own at home, so no one cares what you're doing, what you look like anyway. I will not be posting pictures of you on Instagram. The arms, if you're happy here and you're feeling balanced, try a couple of breaths, holding with a little bowl at the base of your spine, some energy. And imagine as you breathe in, you're going to lift that energy from the base of the spine to the crown of the head. The energy goes around the crown of the head and then goes back down. The bowl faces the floor now. So as you breathe in, you lift the energy up. And as you breathe out, you wash your head and the energy goes down. Fix the gaze, keep going, inhaling. Remember, you can just have the heel down. So there's a little bit of, imagine this is Qigong in a balanced posture. One more time, big breath in. Really grow from the hips now. Imagine you're awakening your spine. And then as you breathe out, you're relaxing everything, letting all the muscles melt off the shoulders, off the face, letting it all go. Hopefully, you've got a burning left ankle now. So give it a shake out. Remember, if your ankle is burning when you're working it, it's getting stronger. And having strong ankles means you don't fall over as often. Very handy, especially if you're a ninja. Let's try the other side, turn the left toes out. Fix the gaze to the floor. Take the left heel on the calf or the ankle. Maybe take it up a little higher. Maybe take it up a little higher. Remember to keep the eyes fixed. The more relaxed you are, the better with this. Once you've found the spot you want to stay, and if you're coming up high and you're really wobbly, Go back down, draw the energy in and up. I swear, all I have to do to activate the right muscles is visualize gathering the energy from beneath the mat into the foot, into the thigh, into the hip, into the hip, into the center, center, and then space. Once you're feeling balanced, hold your bowl. Allow the energy in the hands to lift. Wash the head. Relaxing the brain, hands go down. Inhale, you're taking the energy from the ground beneath you, which of course we do on a daily basis. You're washing the head, you're relaxing, you're letting go of stale, negative energy, maybe from our thoughts, from whatever's going on in our head at the moment. And replacing it with some nice, fresh, clean clarity. As you breathe out, you feel more grounded, more stable. 
And as you breathe in, you feel freer, lighter. Like you don't really have to take on the weight of the world so much. In fact, because we're all connected, and there's no better time to feel connected to everyone else than right now, we're all the same. You feel more supported, you know? When you feel connected to the ground, you feel more supported. When you feel connected to other people, you feel more supported. Even though we're separated at the moment, we are all together. When you're ready, release the left foot, shake out the right ankle. Ah, nice. <laughs> all right, let's come to the wall now. We'll do a little shoulder stretch against the wall. So this is downward dog that you can do a little bit away from the wall. I'm bearing in mind, I'm trying to make this as simple as possible so that even if you don't like getting down on the floor, you're struggling to do kneeling things, this is gonna be accessible for you. So imagine this is a downward dog. This mat has got a mind of its own today. You've got a downward dog against the wall. So your feet are about a foot's width away from the wall. You take your hands a little bit higher than your shoulders and about the same width, if not wider, a bit like down dog. Then you press your hips back and just let your upper body dangle down. And you can kind of slide down a little bit. So you see here, what I'm doing is finding that spot where my feet are far enough away from the wall that I can let my hips hang. So it shouldn't, it shouldn't feel like too much effort, basically. And then let your shoulders relax. This is gonna look and feel different for everyone because of the different shapes of shoulder the different shapes of bone, the different kinds of muscle tension. So don't worry too much if it doesn't look like what I'm doing. I also have incredibly flexible shoulders. I wish I could say the same for different areas of my body, but only my shoulders. So one more breath here, relaxing and opening. And then push the wall away from you, come up to the wall. Take your right arm, if you've got space, straight against the wall and in line with your shoulder. And then press the shoulder into the wall and start to walk yourself over to the left. So you can see I'm pressing my right shoulder into the wall. You can do this with the, the elbow bent at 90 degree. But the important thing is that the arm, or the upper arm at least, is in line with the shoulder. And then as you just walk your toes, you see I'm moving my toes, my eyes, my, my chest over towards the front of the mat. And then I feel the stretch all the way through the front of my right arm. Boy, does it feel nice. Oh, that feels so good. Let's do the other side. The left side's not usually as tight, to be fair. Left arm in line with the left shoulder. And then just, so you're pressing your shoulder against the wall though. And then I'm just gonna move my chest, even turning the head, you'll notice makes a difference. And this helps you to tune into the fact that everything in your body is connected. So if you've got loads of tension in your hip on the left side, affects your shoulder, affects your head. So just enjoy that, it's so good. Oh, I feel like I can breathe better when I do these. One more breath here, really try and find a little bit of space to relax. And then come back, face the wall. Oh, in fact, come back to face away from the wall now. Give your shoulders a little roll if you need to. So we're gonna come into another forward bend, feet a little bit forward away from the wall and your hips are on the wall. Uh, if you did my balance video this week, then this was in that. It's nice using the wall for this. Basically, keeping your knees bent, and don't forget the further away from the wall is, the easier it is to lean the weight into the wall. So your feet can come further away. And then you can just start to let your body relax over your legs. Now try sliding your tailbone up the wall. Push into the floor. Feel like you're trying to get your sit bones on the wall. Imagine you're trying to do a little imprint of your butt cheeks. In the... <laughs> really hope nobody's walking past this this house right now, because they'll get a nice view of my bum. Anyway, relax the arms, relax the body. You don't have to straighten the legs, but if it feels good and you've got the flexibility there, go for it. Take a couple of breaths to relax your upper body fully. If you've got high blood pressure and you don't want your head upside down, you can see the same stretch, but with your fingers on the floor or grabbing a block and putting the block under your hands. In fact, it might be a good time to get the block in a second. What I want you to do now is walk your feet just a little bit closer to the wall, grab your block, and then try taking your lower back against the wall now. This is melasna, it's a little squat, it's really good for your digestion. It's also really good for uh, stretching your lower back out. If your heels aren't going to the floor, grab your block or book or whatever you've got handy and just pop it under your sit bones and then you can walk your feet a little bit further forward. Now have a go here, 
So just trying to relax the sit bones towards the floor. Think about using the wall for support. And breathe into your belly space. This is a really good way of opening your hips as well. You can even start to open the arms to press the shins back, to press the knees wide. Another two breaths. On the exhale, I want you to bring your attention to your belly again, but I also want you to let your belly relax down. Remember, your belly is a place to focus on to bring you away from thinking mind. There's an old... The Buddhist is so simple, the Buddhist saying that if you're anxious and stressed, breathe into your belly. And if you're tired and lethargic, breathe into the bridge of your nose. And it, it really works, so simple. You just have to think about that space. Anyway, so you can move the block out of the way, take your hands to the floor, and just take, make your way to the floor nice and easy. Now turn to face the wall, slide your legs up the wall, and then you can take the right foot just above the left thigh with the left leg straight. And then just slide the left foot down the wall until it feels like a stretch for your glute. Then you can flex the foot a little bit and, and draw the foot a little closer to the ground. And then just use your hands to massage the outer hip here. So if like me, you get layers of tension in your glutes and your outer hips, this is a really fantastic stretch. And because you're using the wall, you can adjust your hips further away, closer to whatever feels good, basically. You can take a couple of breaths here. Bearing in mind, you can pause the video if you want any of these little sections to last a bit longer. I recommend taking at least five breaths in this and also experimenting a little bit with sort of almost like self-massage. Sometimes it's nice to massage your foot in this as well. Bearing in mind that the small space you've got in your foot, the easier it is to open up the rest of the body. So when you've done that side, you've had a few long breaths there. Take the right foot back to the wall and then take the left foot just above the right knee and then just slide it down. You're looking for angles. So to protect the knee joint, flex the left foot and then just work the stretch. Most of this, in fact, you know, the benefits of all this is the attention that you're giving your body. Not really what you're doing, but the focus. So don't sit focusing on something else or something that's going to stress you out. Draw your attention to the breath, to the body, to the sensations. And imagine like a really good massage therapist. You're going to give all of your energy now, all of your attention, your awareness, and your concentration to your physical body. And this alone will help reduce anxiety. So when you've had enough of that side, you can straighten out the left leg, really um, straighten out the right leg, sorry, and release the left leg. Now, just depending on your scooch ability here, on your, how easy it is to scooch, I'm having to wiggle like a mealworm here. Straighten out so that your feet are on the wall. Grab your strap or your belt or your towel or anything you've got close by. Pick up the right foot with the belt or the strap. Get a good grip with the right hand. Now the left leg, you're gonna keep it straight and press the left foot into the wall. This will help you stretch out the hip flexor. Take a deep breath in, keeping the right shoulder down. So you might need to give yourself a bit more strap length. And as you breathe out, work the ball of the right big toe to the ceiling, and then just maybe even circle the ankle until you can feel a little bit of flexibility coming to it. And then work as you breathe in, close your eyes, the space into the back of the right leg, the right foot, the right hip, the lower back. Bring the left hand onto the front of the left hip and work space into the left hip flexor. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, see if you can ease the leg a little closer to you. I'm gonna recommend, if you don't do a lot of yoga especially, to keep the right leg straight but a little bit further away from you, just so you can stretch everything in the back of the right leg. If it feels good, let the right leg come out to the side, but only to the point where you don't let your left hip lift off the floor. So you have to keep the hips down. Engage with the right foot and the strap. Take a deep breath in as you exhale, work into the inside of the leg. And you might be here and feel it, it doesn't matter. 
Just keeping the left hip down, remember, don't let the left hip pop off the floor. Bend the right knee, bring the leg to center. Option one, to switch hands, so you've got the strap in the left hand, and then keep the right foot high, cross the right foot to the left, look over the right shoulder. Option two is just to have the right knee bent, and then take the right knee, again in line with the hip, over to the left. You can put a block or a strap on, or the bolster underneath the knee, and then look over the right shoulder. Oh. And then work the breath to the stomach, to the lower back, opening everything in the outer hip and the lower back space. Look over the right shoulder. So good, twisting is so good for your body. And then when you're ready, release out. Let's do the other side. Take the right foot against the wall. Pick up the left foot and then loop the strap around the left foot. And then lengthen out through the left leg. Flex the foot. Give the foot a little ankle circle so I can feel lots of stuff going on in my ankle today. Really worth noticing because it's all connected tissues that go into the foot, sole of the foot. So you're just stretching that space out. And then with the strap in the left hand now, press the right hip down and engage with the left foot. Try pushing the ball of the left big toe towards the sky. Left hip goes down. And then keeping the legs straight, so you might need to give yourself loads of space. You might be here, you know, who cares? As long as you're feeling it, you're doing it right. And then release the shoulders to the ground, work the breath into the pose for the right leg. Think holistically about your body. Focus holistically on everything at the same time because you have to. Basically everything from your forehead down to the sole of your foot is connected. And then releasing tension as you exhale. So the inhale, drawing your awareness to that space. The exhale is releasing tension. Now you can let your left leg move out to the side slowly just until you feel it. Bear in mind I've been doing yoga every single day for a very, very long time, years and years, which is why I can open up my inside left hip. But you might have just started, in which case you're here, and you can keep the knee bent a little bit. You know, you might not be able to even straighten the leg. That's fine, it doesn't matter, as long as you're feeling it. So now you wanna feel it in your inside hip. Keep the right leg really engaged. This kind of stretch, honest to God, allows more blood flow to the lower body organs. And don't forget, you've got a lot of organs down there. You've got your digestive system, you've got your, um, your sexual reproductive organs, your kidneys. And when you're ready, bring the leg to center. Don't forget, if you're feeling it, you can just switch the hands around. I want you to try and keep the leg high and then take the left leg to the right now, working out the heel and then look over the left shoulder, or get rid of the strap, bend the left knee, bring the left knee, keeping it high in line with the hip over to the right, take a block underneath it. And then work the shoulder blades into the floor, work the left arm out. Imagine you are a big piece of chewy candy and you're trying to stretch yourself out over the floor. Imagine yourself as a wham bar or a Charleston chew, depending on which area of the, the world you're in. Imagine yourself as a glob of marmite on your knife and you're trying to spread the marmite evenly over the top. I don't know what I'm talking about actually, just ignore me. One more breath. And then when you're ready, bend your knee, release to center. You can take a few moments just to circle the knees here. <sighs> oh God, I feel better already with those big stretches. Now, bridge pose, one of my faves. So grab your block, have it next to you. Take your feet close to your hips, walk your fingertips towards your heels. Tuck your chin to your chest. As you breathe in, lift your hips up. If you're new to yoga, you might not be able to get up that high, who cares? You can take the block underneath your lower back. Keep it low. If you're feeling that you wanna go high, you can take the block on its higher setting. Or you can go really high. It depends on what flexibility you've got in your lower back. Now, I want you to hold here for a few moments, opening the hip flexors and just enjoying a kind of fairly passive back bend. Once you get up, if you can interlace your fingers behind your back, go for it. But it doesn't matter if you don't want to do that. 
what you want to make sure is the block is supporting you. So it feels like, it feels like it's digging into you. It's probably at a bit of an angle. So just adjust it very slightly. Maybe feel it with your hands. Try to get the weight to go directly down on the block. And if you've got any pain sensations, sharp sensations, move. Move the block, go lower, you know, adjust this. Try squeezing the knees towards the midline once you've found the spot, gauging the inner thighs. Just take a few breaths to feel the back bend taking effect to your belly, your thighs. Back bending isn't just good for stretching the spine, but it also secures the vertebrae in the lower back, kind of compressing them in a good way. So compression doesn't have to be a bad thing for your lower back. In fact, it can be quite a good thing if there's no pain attached to that compression. You're also opening your diaphragm, your heart space, your shoulders. Oh, it feels so good. If you want to and you're feeling quite stable on your block, you can lift your legs in the air, which gives you a little mini inversion. Give it a try, it's kind of fun. It can feel a bit scary in the middle of the room. But to be honest, worst case scenario in this, the block falls out pretty much. That's the only thing that could go wrong. Or you end up with your feet over your head. But at the end of the day, as long as you're chilling out, it, it'll be fine. So when you're inverting, the blood flow changes direction and it becomes quite soothing for your heart. If you think about your heart and all its pumps, it has to push the blood through the arteries um, to the different areas of the body. And it does it against gravity. So when you reverse gravity, you're also reversing the flow of blood. You're allowing all those valves to feel a bit freer. <sighs> so take a really big breath into your chest and let your heart relax. If you don't want to do this, you can just put your legs up the wall like we did in that figure four hip stretch earlier. You can pause the video if you want to do this for longer. Feel free to stay there for longer. When you're ready to come down nice and slowly, lift your hips with your heels and take the block out. You can take the hips back to the floor. Take the elbows wide and just let the knees sway side to side. Now for the relaxation, I'm going to recommend, well, I'm going to show you a couple of options you can do here. So what you could have a go at doing is making a loop with the strap. So this is a supported bound angle pose. You've got a little loop with the strap here. This is clearly too much for my brain today. <laughs> um, and then you loop it around your feet. Oh, no, hang on a minute. Now, first of all, you take it underneath your sit bones like this around your waist. So the straps around the waist, like a little belt, and then you put it around your feet. And then you can tighten it and loosen it as per how, how much support you feel like you want. Then you can pop your bolster at your lower back, or your, in my case, I've just got a cushion. Grab your block as well. Have a little lie down so your strap is holding your legs then you put i mean this is a bit big this this block but you can put something smaller underneath your head so you can see i've made a little prop so i'm doing a miniature back bend in my upper body with the bolster under my spine my hips are on the floor and my head is being supported by the block And you can stay here as long as you like. Allow the arms to relax out to the side. If this feels really uncomfortable on your inner thighs, you can put two more blocks, books, whatever you've got under your legs. Bearing in mind this is a brilliant stretch for those lower body organs. Again, get the blood flow to your digestion, to your reproductive organs. It can freeze the tension that we often hold of emotional stress in the hips. And now allow the forehead to relax, the belly, the eyes to sink heavy in the head. Take a deep breath in through your nose and open your mouth as you exhale, relax completely. these next few moments be completely immersed in your body and the sensations so 
Imagine you were drifting in a small boat on calm water. Observing the sky above, allowing your body to be gently rocked by the water beneath. Imagining that your mind were the sky. Vast and expansive. Every time a thought comes into your mind, it's like a cloud, it just drifts by. You don't try to stop your thoughts, but you do just acknowledge them without getting drawn into them or seduced by them. And so the thought just keeps going. You let everything wash over you. No matter what thoughts come into your mind, no matter what distractions try to pull you away from your peace, you have endless space to sit back in. You can allow these things to come and to go without allowing them to disturb you. We surrender and accept fully what is, rather than fighting and battling with it. Take this time to enjoy living. Pause the video if you would like to relax for longer or if you're ready for the rest of your day take your time to move your arms like you're waking up and breathe in fully and deeply through the nose use your hands to bring your knees together if you're in bound angle pose and then bring your feet towards you to slide the strap off Straighten your legs and try to extend out through the heels to wake up. Squeeze the backs of the hips to stretch the front. Bring your knees one at a time into your chest and roll your lower back gently in the floor. Take your feet to the floor and carefully remove the block. Roll over to one side just for a few moments. If you've got a very high bolster, you can bring that away from you. Take your time to come off it using your arms. When you're ready for the rest of the day, use your left hand to push, or use your right hand or whichever hand to push yourself up to seated. Now, as is tradition in a yoga practice, we finish with an OM. And I like to do three, because three is the magic number. Um, and the vibrations are very healing for your chest. I want you to imagine as you do this OM, and this, the OM signifies the coming together of all the vibrations in the universe. And I want you to imagine that this OM brings you to these different uh, or, to, or to this combination of everything together so you feel more connected to those around you, more connected to the planet, to everything that's going on right now. Uh, let's connect 
with these arms. So comfortable seated position. You could take any mudra. In fact, try bringing the palms together and touching the thumbs to the chest and feel the vibration in your chest through your thumb. The vibrations of arming and chanting are very calming for the nerve system and this is scientifically proven now. So when you're ready, take a full breath in and a full exhale. Don't worry about what it sounds like. Inhale to arm. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm really pleased to have been able to release this video for the nothing. Um, but if you would like to help me keep going with these videos as, um, uh, in these hard times, <laughs> please uh, join my website. It's notyouraverageyoga.com and it's weekly videos like this, all different things. Once every single Monday, I release a brand new one, um, and I'm you know open to feedback and to chat chatting about anything. So please message me if you have any feedback or anything you'd like to say, anything else you'd like to see more of. I'm going to do probably on my website a cardio video this week, so it'll be quite feisty yoga. So if you want to get a little bit of uh, heat going in your practice, then join me with that. But otherwise, uh, keep in touch. I'm going to add a little short video with some. Uh, relaxation techniques, breathing techniques. Um, so look out for that. That's going to be released in the next couple of days. Thank you so much again for joining me and stay well and happy.